This year we've lost seven of our legends. Robert Peterson, Wallace Sherrard, Robin Olds, Hal Fishman, Paul Tibbetts, Tex Hill, and Steve Fawcett. It wasn't easy to see them take their flight west, but as integral players in the history of aviation, these aviation legends will never be forgotten. Robert Peterson was far more than Hot Rod Magazine, the groundbreaking publication he founded in 1948. He often told friends, to limit your interests is to limit your life and his diverse interests reflected that philosophy. Whether it was business, airplanes, hunting, or race cars, Peterson threw his whole heart into whatever he was pursuing. His life was a reflection of and a tribute to America's car culture and the audacious spirit of the hot rodders of Los Angeles. His efforts to spread his joy for automobiles led to a hugely successful publishing empire and the creation of the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, one of the finest collections of vehicles in the world. Peterson also had a longtime love of aviation that originated with his wartime experience in the Army Air Corps. That passion inspired him to found Peterson Aviation, a successful fixed base operation at Van Nuys Airport. But aviation also led to tragedy when he and his wife Margie lost their two sons in an airplane accident. Though it was the turning point in his life, it was also a moment that challenged him to persevere, continue his work, and embrace both the people and the possessions he cherished. Losing any aviator is a blow to a close-knit community, but losing a member of the Mercury 7 is a sad day for history. Yet Wally Sherrard will be remembered for many accomplishments beyond his historic role as the fifth man into space, he was also a textbook aviator and combat-hardened fighter pilot who flew 90 combat missions in Korea. And he remains the only astronaut to have flown in all three of NASA's original planned spaceflight programs. Of all his brethren, Shira might also be the last person to hang his head in sadness. He was a light-hearted prankster, the most mischievous of his charismatic gang, and a man who famously proclaimed Levity makes life a lot easier. He remains, as he said himself at the funeral of Alan Shepard, part of a brotherhood that will endure forever. His bulletproof mustache might have kept General Robin Old safe during ferocious aerial battles in not one, but two wars. But the chest full of medals he earned testifies to his courage. If you're a fighter pilot, you have to be willing to take risks, he said. And if there was ever an advocate for the singular skill of dogfighting, it was General Olds. The numbers speak for themselves. 259 combat missions, including 107 in World War II and 152 in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. Many of his comrades may remember General Olds from the tightly knit group of fighter pilots called the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association, better known as the River Rats, who raised hell from Vietnam to Las Vegas. In the end, Robin Olds was a man of many accomplishments, a triple ace with 16 confirmed victories, a West Point graduate, an all-American football hero, a truly uncommon officer who chafed under bureaucracy while celebrating a finely tuned military and one hell of a fighter pilot. Among the last things he told Airport Journal was, just let it be said that I lived happily ever after. Anyone who has lived in Southern California during the past half century will remember Hal Fishman, known affectionately among his colleagues as the Professor. His nickname grew from the anchorman's characterization of himself as a teacher rather than a media personality. A true newsman, he had been on the air continuously in Los Angeles since 1960. Many of his viewers recall that he was an avid pilot who used his own aircraft to cover stories. He was in a helicopter over his beloved city during the turbulent Watts riots of 1965, flew his bonanza around the eruption of Mount St. Helens, 
and once chased down a Soviet fishing trawler believed to be a spy ship off the coast of California. Faced with a decision to broadcast the controversial videotape depicting the arrest of Rodney King, Fishman struggled at the crossroads of journalistic integrity and chose to run the tape. Despite the turbulent aftermath of his decision, he never expressed any regrets. Fishman was also a published novelist, and many of his world speed records still stand. The field of journalism and the world it impacts is less rich with his passing. General Olds was in an exclusive club, Triple Aces. These were the brave men known to have shot down more than 15 enemy planes. Perhaps their maverick spirit infuses men like Olds' one-time commander, Tex Hill, famously known as a founding member of Claire Chenault's Flying Tigers. Tex Hill shot down 18 aircraft during his time with the American Volunteer Group. It wasn't all guts and glory, as Hill told airport journals. Stepping out cost him his seat on one of the Tigers' first battles, and the crash at an airfield narrowly missed him and killed a friend. You just hope you do your job better than the other guy, or you're not going to be around very long, he said. Tex passed away just a few months ago at the age of 92, which is a good, long run at it. Colonel Paul Tibbetts was just 30 years old when he dropped the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan, in a plane he named the Enola Gay after his mother. But for all his accomplishments, rising to Brigadier General in the Air Force, a long career at Executive Jet Aviation, and finally earning a place in the National Aviation Hall of Fame, the military officer never dwelled much on his most well-known mission. In fact, when he was interviewed for airport journals, he reflected on a more personal bombing run. He recalled how at the tender age of 12, he talked to barnstormer Doug Davis into letting him ride along on a run, dropping Baby Ruth candy bars over the racetrack at Hialeah. What could possibly be more exciting than a mission that changed the whole world? He said, as nothing to match the thrill of a 12-year-old boy's first airplane ride. After Morgan Freeman finished this narration to the legends, we lost Bob Pond. Bob flew west on December 14, 2007. In the process of enjoying the ride in the co-pilot seat, I stuck my arm out the window and just about lost it. That was my indoctrination into real flying and it's been part of my life ever since. Those were the earliest flying memories of aviator collector businessman and philanthropist Bob Pond, who passed away this last December. An ardent aviator since that first flight over Miggs Field in Chicago, he joined the Navy Air Corps during World War II to help protect his country. His most memorable achievement was using his fortune to protect America's aviation heritage by donating his collection to form the Palm Springs Air Museum. The one-time naval ensign and successful floor cleaning machine manufacturer accumulated more than 22,000 hours of flying in a 60-year career. He asked Bert Rattan to help build the Pond Racer, an all-graphite warbird designed to help protect his beloved warbirds from untimely endings in the air races. After buying a pair of military aircraft in 1970, he caught the collecting bug and ultimately purchased hundreds of World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam-era aircraft, as well as more than 100 classic automobiles ranging from Rolls-Royce limousines to street-savvy roadsters. They all found a home at the Palm Springs Air Museum, where Bob Pond enjoyed his position as Chairman Emeritus and spent his final days among the planes he cherished.